Shalom, shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Wahara Kakwadash, double honors to my apostles, the elders at Great Millstone, the men that taught me the truth through the Spirit. <clears throat> Peace and blessings to you, brothers, teaching this word, the truth and sincerity. Peace and blessings to the rest of the elect of the house of Israel that's got it throughout the four corners of the earth. This is going to be in response, you know, um, GMS in Rome. Um, that brother get a show, you know, pray. We first wake up in the morning, something pertaining to that, which has been on my mind and something I've been battling myself. You know, prayer is everything. Like, faith is everything. And like the brother broke it down beautifully, you know, we're in a spiritual war and a part of our spiritual arsenal and our spiritual um, um, equipment is prayer. And we have to pray when we first wake up in the morning, pray when we out and about, pray before you go to sleep. Because Satan is always attacking. And Satan is always at war. Satan don't take no lunch breaks. All right? When you resting, the demons and Satan are still going at it trying to distract you, deceive you, and to plague you. But something I wanted to touch on as well, which Apostle Tahar quoted many moons ago, you're not a man of the Lord unless you sighing and crying. If you're not crying out to the Lord, if you're not praying without cease, you're not a man of the Lord. If you're not uttering uh, pain, if you're not uttering complaints, if you're not uttering uh, the vexation of your soul for all the wickedness that you witness and see in us on this planet Earth, you're not a man of the Lord. There's 24 hours in a day. There's 24 hours in a day. If you're not speaking nothing godly or holy or something pertaining to the scriptures, you're not a man of the Lord. You know, when you woke up and came into this truth and found out that you was an Hebrew Israelite from whatever perspective tribe that you're from, right? And you found out that the God of the Bible was your God and you made it, you made a vow, right? Knowingly or unknowingly that you are a servant to the Most High, right? Now it's a part of, because that's a part of our contract. We made an agreement with the Most High that he would be our God and we would be his people if we kept his commandments. So like I said, it's 24 hours in a day. And if you ain't spending some time crying out to the Lord, you're not a man of the Lord. Right? And we're going to get a couple of scriptures. This is the book of Psalms. Chapter 50, verse 14. I'm going to read 13. No, 14. Offer unto the Most High thanksgiving and pay thy vows unto the Most High. So we're supposed to offer unto the Most High thanksgiving. Giving ka halayim to Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah, giving all praises to the Most High and His Son for waking us up, for having given us clothes and raiment, having a roof over our heads, you know. Whatever we have, the Most High gave us, and we're supposed to offer up thanksgiving to Him. So if you're not offering up thanksgiving unto the Most High, you're not a man of the Lord. So it says, uh, offer unto the, the Most High thanksgiving and pay thy vows unto the Most High. So you're supposed to pay your vow unto the Most High. And what is your vow? Your vow, being a Hebrew Israelite, is to keep the commandments and believe upon the Son of the Most High and offer up your your mind, body, and spirit to the Most High. You have to keep that vow. You know what the scriptures say about um, breaking a vow is worthy unto death. Let's get that. This is the book of Ecclesiastes. Chapter 5, verse 4. 
It says, when thou vowest a vow unto the Most High, defer not to pay it. So you ain't supposed to defer your vows. Lord, I promise, you know, if you increase my faith or increase, if you deliver me out this situation, I won't no longer play video games. Lord, I won't no longer deal with this woman. Lord, I'll sacrifice my mind, body, and soul to you if you get me out this situation. So it says, um, Salakia, when thou vowest a vow unto the Most High, defer not to pay it, for he have no pleasure in fools, pay thou, pay that which thou hast vowed. So whatever you offered unto the Most High, you got to pay it. And we all made a vow stating that if, you know, he'll be our power and we'll be his people, please deliver us. If he'll deliver us, we'll offer our mind, body, and souls to him. We'll offer our time. We'll offer our desires. We'll offer everything that we want. We'll put that to the side so we can be a servant unto him. So it says, Better is it that thou shouldest not vow than thou shouldest vow and not pay. So better is it for you not to say anything at all, not to make no promises at all, than to make a promise and not pay what you promised to pay. Suffer not thy mouth to cause thy flesh to sin, neither say thou for the before the angel that is that it was an error, wherefore should God be angry at thy voice and destroy the work of thy hands? So don't say, yo, my bad, Lord. My, my fault, I didn't mean to offer that sacrifice. I didn't mean to put that on the line, right? That's why the scriptures speak about counting the course and considering the matter, right? You gotta count the course. You gotta think 10 steps ahead. This ain't checkers, this is chess, right? So it says, say that thou before the angel, that it was an error, thy voice. It says that it was an error, wherefore should God be angry at thy voice and destroy the work of thy hands, all right? So the Lord is going to destroy whatever you try to prosper because you didn't pay your vow. And we all made a vow to the Most High, like once again, knowingly or unknowingly, that you was going to be a living sacrifice to Him. You was going to be holy and acceptable, right? Sacrifice unto the Lord. Whether you did it knowingly or unknowingly. The moment you wake up and you realize that you were Israelite, the vow was already set, right? It was already written. And now you got to pay that vow. So back to Psalm chapter 50, verse 14. It says, Offer unto the Most High thanksgiving, and pay thy vow unto the Most High, and call upon me in the day of trouble. Are we not living in the day of trouble? Are we not living in the times of evil? So we are supposed to cry unto our power. It says, and call upon me in the day of trouble. I will deliver thee, and thou shalt glorify me. Because when the time comes, we be, be delivered from these set perils. We be delivered from these times of trouble. We be delivered from these days of evil. Right? We're going to glorify Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shah. Right? We're going to glorify him. Why? Because he delivered us from the destruction that he's about to bring upon America and two thirds of our people. Which you have two thirds walking on fucking around me, you know? But it's all good. It says, and call upon me in the day of trouble, I will deliver thee and thou shalt glorify me. So once again, the scriptures that's written about the elect, they're gonna call upon the Lord. And once again, if you're not calling upon the Lord, in the 24 hour period, you're not a man of the Lord. This is the book of Joel.
chapter 1, verse 14. It reads, Salak, give me one second. Oh, here we go. Sanctify ye a fast, call a solemn assembly, gather the elders and all the inhabitants of the land into the house of the Lord, your power, and cry unto the Lord. So we're supposed to call for a solemn assembly, right? This is why, you know, the other groups hate us because we're not in the so-called festive spirit. We're not in the Israelite party spirit. We're in the solemn spirit. We're in the mournful spirit, right? Because we're not happy here, right? Even though you might have things, right, that you attach to in this world, whether it's kids, a house, whatever. This is not our rest. And the Lord constantly reminds us this is not our rest. And that's one of the, the main things we're supposed to be crying about to deliver us to the rest. Bring us to the rest. So it says, it says, sanctify ye a fast, call a solemn assembly, gather the elders and all the inhabitants of the land to the house of the Lord. We are the house of the Lord, right? It says the Lord your power and cry unto the Lord. So we're supposed to gather ourselves together and we're supposed to be crying to the Lord. Once again, as Apostle Tahar quoted, if you're not sighing and crying to Yahweh Bashim Yahweh you are not a man of the Lord. Because it's written all throughout the scriptures that the men of the Lord are going to be sighing and crying. This is the book of Matthew, chapter 25, verse 1. Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins, which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. Right? The virgins represent the elect. Okay? It says, and five of them were wise, and five were foolish. The five represent the elect. The foolish represents the two-thirds. The ones that didn't take this truth serious. The ones that's not sighing and crying. Right? Those are the five foolish, because the five wise are sighing and crying. So it says, which um, they that are, were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. So the five foolish, see which the apostle to us says, you can't lose the oil, it's either you got it or you don't have it. The scriptures say that the five foolish didn't take no oil. So they had lamps, right? They know they're Israelites, but they ain't got no oil. They ain't got no breath. They rocking fringes, but they ain't got no breath. They ain't got no oil. It says, but the wise took oil and their vessels with their lamps, right? While the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept, right? And at midnight, there was a cry made. Behold, the bridegroom cometh. Go ye out to meet him. So once again, all throughout the scriptures, you hear the terminology about crying, right? Now this cry represents when the Lord returns, right? The scriptures speak about a great shout is going to be heard in the heavens, right? A great trumpet is going to be blown, right? So it says, behold, the bridegroom cometh. Go ye out to meet him. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said unto the wise, give us your, of your oil for our lamps are going out. So look, they didn't count the course. They didn't consider the matter, right? And guess what? Their lights went out. So it says, but the wise answer say not so, lest there be not enough for us and you, but go ye rather to them that sell and buy for yourselves. But by then it's too late. It's going to be too late. The time that you should have been sighing and crying and seeking after the Lord is before that shout is made. Right? It's before that cry is made. So it says, and while they went to buy, the bridegroom came. It's too late. It's too late to apologize. It's too late. All right? It's too late. The time for you to buy the oil, to get the oil, is now. The time to seek the Lord is now. The time to clean out your inward man, to be born again, is now. 
The time to be crying unto the Lord is now. It ain't time to get your body count up, to, to, to have sex with as many women as you can, to get as, the newest flashing trends, you know, get the newest sneakers, to get the newest game system. The time is to seek and cry after the Lord. It says, um, and while they went to buy, the bridegroom came, and they that were ready went in with him to the marriage, and the doors were shut. So when the Lord returns, right, the ones that's been sighing and crying, the ones that's been shouting, the ones that's been praying unto the Lord, week in, week out, day and night, those are the ones that's going to enter into the into the wedding into the feast while the rest is going to be left out and the doors are going to be shut right last scripture this is the book of Ezekiel chapter 9 verse 4 it reads, And the Lord said unto him, Go through the midst of the city, through the midst of Jerusalem. And Jerusalem represents the people for a place. So it's talking about you so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native American Indians, and the ones that believe that scattered abroad, right? And set a mark upon the foreheads. This mark in the Hebrew is thawa, which means exemption from judgment. It's exempt from judgment, meaning do not put death upon these people. Do not plague these people. Right? It says, put a mark upon their foreheads of the men that sigh and that cry for all the abominations that be done in the midst thereof. So, the ones that's going to receive the mark of exemption, meaning, Lord, don't kill these people, is the ones that sighing and crying for all the abominations that be done in the midst thereof. It's 24 hours in a day. And if you're not crying or praying on to the Lord, you're not a man of the Lord, and you're not going to be exempt from judgment. I pray and hope that you was edified. I'm going to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, Waha, Rakakwadash. Till next time I say, Shalom.